1 billion. This is the number of appliances in the USA that should be converted into electric by 2050 if we want to meet the climate goals. Add to them the electrification of cities, transportation and the escalating demand from servers that power AI applications and we can better understand the concern of Elon Musk about outages and running out of electricity, especially for his cars. Musk made the message clear back in 2023 at the gathering of utility industry operators during which he stated how much we need and when we run the risk of frequent power outages. The point is, uh, is it's going to be 3x uh, current um, and I think that 3x number is probably, probably happens around 2045-ish. He gave the same message in front of the engineers and managers of Bosch a few months later at Bosch annual event. If we believe his words, we should be concerned, as apparently he predicted other shortages that affected the global economy. Take a listen. Very predictable. I've actually predicted this over a year ago. Um, so over a year ago, the shortage was chips, um, uh, uh, ch neural net chips. Uh, yeah. Then I, I, it was very easy to predict that the, the, the next shortage will be voltage step-down transformers. Yeah. So because <laughs> exactly. you get, you've got to feed the power to these things. Yes. So if you've got 100 to 300 kilovolts coming out of your a utility and it's got to step all the way down to you know 0.6 volts that's a lot of stepping down as the drawing shows stepping down is the process of lowering the power from the grid to the final user and according to musk we might start experiences shortages starting next year in the tech companies so now we're in step down and I, this is my not that funny joke, which is that they need transformers to run transformers. Then the next shortage will be electricity. So I think next year you'll see the electricity, that they just can't find enough electricity to run all the chips. The utilities are aware as they are investing in the grid. So is NVIDIA, which is providing the artificial intelligence to optimize the distribution of electricity. But this simply might not be enough. He gave the same warning with more or less the same words previously during a chat on the popular Lex Friedman channel. But the event he refers to when he brings up the issue is the same chat on stage we saw at the beginning, the annual meeting of the Edison Electric Institute, the association that represents all US investor-owned electric companies. And if it sounded dramatic the first time, the following times it sounded more entertaining, but the goal was really to shake the audience. I, I can't emphasize enough, we need more electricity. <laughs> <laughs> How much electricity you think you need is more than that is needed. <laughs> I assure you. I really can't emphasize enough, we're, we're at, like, I think, a very exciting juncture for um, electricity providers, uh, which is that the demand for electricity is, is, gonna go, is, is going exponential mm -hmm. um, and will, like I said, roughly, roughly triple uh, where it is today to get to a fully sustainable the economy. Um. The same warning is raised by other organizations and speakers at several events. Among the warnings is a report by the North American Electric Reliability Corporation, published in 2023, anticipates that over 300 million people in the US and Canada might experience electricity shortages from 2024 to 2028. The three main contributors to the potential crisis are the increasing demand for energy from the tech industry, the electrification of buildings, and the electrification of vehicles. In the past few years, the companies mining bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies were blamed for the high utilization of electricity in their operations. But today the blame is shifted to the large technology companies that are building large data centers to offer new AI-based innovations. On the other hand, the same power-hungry GPUs and servers that are powering the new AI applications are also part of the solution for utility companies in terms of managing the flow of electricity and prevention of power outages. Before looking at the solutions, it is important to remember that utilities traditionally operate in a slow-moving environment that transfer power from the generators to the neighborhood in a predictable, linear way. A model that Musk, but also other in the industry, consider now out of date. So, so, so I think I would just be cautious about extrapolating from the past because the future is not like the past. The, the, the future is is a massive yeah. increase in electricity demand, and it's going to take everything 
we've got to just keep up with it. Even with utilities introducing clean energy to generate electricity, the models need to change. The idea is also illustrated by a representative of Utilidata, a company that is partnered with NVIDIA to help utilities to become smarter and that is a regular guest at NVIDIA GDC's events. But when you get all the way to the edge of the grid and, um, and, a, and a cloud passes over a solar panel um, or the, you know, your neighbor plugs in their electric vehicle into a, into a level two charger at seven watts, if both of those things occurred at the same time, you'd have um, you'd have potential for you know a, a hundred percent change in power consumption at that endpoint, and that is a super discontinuous um, uh, problem to solve. And so the solutions that you need to engage with at the edge of the grid are fundamentally different than the ones you use to solve um, at the kind of the center of the grid. The utilities are aware of this and are starting to make the transition to a smarter grid. At a previous edition of the NVIDIA GDC, for example, Portran General, or PGE, a major utility company serving the state of Oregon, illustrated their process to transition to a smarter grid. The process involves a concept that is familiar and should be appreciated by Elon Musk, automation. We're moving from an interconnected world. We talked about AMI, meters, um, now we're needing to move in to be able to decipher what pieces of equipment are operating when, how we can predict how they're going to react to the weather. And so knowing what our system is going to do, knowing what our customer loads are going to do, we need that predictability. And so the advanced intelligence and the forecasting tools that we need to move us to this predictive stage and provides the intelligence finally that devices can actually communicate and what we would call the autonomous grid edge. How can that those devices communicate and balance themselves on the grid edge based on con conditions that are happening either in the neighborhood or in that region or even in the larger uh, West Coast? PGE is not the only one, and the automation process has the support of academia and research institutions. Priadont is an assistant professor at MIT, whose research focuses on applying machine learning tools to the management of electric power systems. In particular, Dr. Dont is working on machine learning tools that can interact with the laws of physics. In her frequent presentations at industry events, she acknowledges that electric power grids are complex systems governed by strict physical laws. But what if the physical laws and constraints are directly embedded into machine learning models like deep neural networks? The task is difficult because machine learning tools can be erratic and this could lead to disasters. But Dante's research aims at integrating machine learning predictive capabilities with the reliability of traditional control systems, therefore eliminating all the risks. Her research is already producing positive results. And we can still same use this optimization in the loop machine learning paradigm to actually come up with controllers for different devices on power grids that perform well but still have kind of provable robustness guarantees even if something goes wrong in the underlying system. One main condition to achieve the objective is to educate utilities to collect but also to store all kinds of research and data about their operations, a practice that is not common in the industry. And we can do this not by throwing away all of the research on engineering, on physics that has been done in those fields, but really figuring out clever ways to merge machine learning based approaches with these past approaches that we have. And obviously, when machine learning is involved, NVIDIA is involved too. As mentioned before, NVIDIA is partnering with Utility Data to collect and analyze data in real time at both ends the substation and the homes. Also, NVIDIA has developed the Modulus SDK, an open source framework for building, training, and fine tuning machine learning tools in combination with events driven by the law of physics. The goal is to enable real time predictions. And all of this within a simple Python interface. NVIDIA also uses its technology and software skills to analyze the waves at a smaller level. Take a listen. 
Um, and But we can actually begin to use AI to identify and, and, and categorize uh, the the actual type of event that's happening within the power signal. but And we always seem to draw these power signals as really smooth lines, but if you look a little bit deeper, they're not quite that clean. And so what we've chosen to do is then look deeper into the harmonics, that that, that noise that's within the line, and begin to transform uh, that noise, that that those harmonics at 60,000, 30,000 points, maybe up to 60,000 points per minute, and be able to look at the signature or the or the, or the are the characteristics of the of the event that are happening, not only at the waveform level, but at the harmonics level. These are steps taken by utilities to create more electricity by reducing waste and predict consumption. But it might still not be enough to prevent blackouts in the coming years. Leah Strzok is an associate professor in the Department of Political Science at the University of California, Santa Barbara, and the author of one of the best-selling books on utilities and climate change. She also collaborates with Rewiring America, a leading electrification nonprofit focused on the transition to electrifying our homes, businesses, and communities. She shares Musk's vision that despite the efforts from the utilities, the electricity in the near future might still not be enough, as consumers are incentivized to electrify everything that produces carbon. And by everything, she means a lot of devices, a billion items, like we saw in the slide at the beginning of this video. The slide was created by the founders of Rewiring America after an extensive research on the field. There is another aspect that is motivating the utilities to improve their systems. Many of the outages are caused by grids that fail during natural events, like excessive snow, hurricanes, or even wildfires. Some utility companies have been accused of being responsible of outages, and in the worst scenarios, even of wildfires, because of negligence in the maintenance of the grid. As a result, these utilities had to pay hefty penalties. This is not making insurance companies happy, and among them is the insurance branch of Berkshire Hathaway. In the annual letter to the shareholders, Warren Buffett has assured the investors that the company is financially prepared for natural events that impact the grid. But if an utility is accused of negligence and the utility is insured by Berkshire Hathaway, tough luck, the insurance will not pay. In conclusion, we can say that there are countries of events and reports about fighting climate change while preventing the risk of electricity shortages. But Musk summarizes the solutions in three pillars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, I mean, there's fundamentally um, three, three pillars uh, to a sustainable energy future. Um, what, you know, one is sustainable energy generation, which is uh, solar, wind, um, hydro, actually, you know, a fan of, of nuclear, of good, good old fission, um, I think is underrated. Um, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, I mean, we could easily supply all of the world's electricity with fission, um, but we will, I don't know, some, but sometimes the understanding of physics is not amazing, and so they get scared of things they shouldn't be scared of. Um, so, um, so I'm very much pro, anyway, it's basically, any electricity where you can say, okay, this is not going to meaningfully change the chemistry of the climate and oceans, you know, the atmospheric oceans. And so, um, anyway, so you've got sustainable electricity generation on one side, then you've got um, stationary batteries as the third pillar, second pillar, uh, which uh, is needed for any kind of intermittent uh, electricity production. And by its nature, uh, solar and wind are intermittent. Um, so batteries and solar and wind go together extremely well. Um, and uh, and then the third pillar is electric transport. Mm -hmm. So get all three of those pillars going, and we have a sustainable uh, future as, as long as the sun shines.